And now let's create some veins to make it looks, look more realistic. I got some... Some references here. Uh, reference. It's really disgusting stuff. Like this brain here. And this one. So check it out. We have some really thick veins. Uh, and dark veins. And some really small ones. Those really, really, really small ones. You can create using a map. And a noise. A turbulence and something. But though this big one here. And this red the bigger bigger ones we can create with particle flow so let's call this one here brain i will just save a copy of my scene i'll call it brain final and Okay, let's create the veins. So I'll use a uh, standard flow again. Let's delete this wire and del delete this beginning here. And let's wire this one here. Just use the same particle flow source with the cache and stuff. And let's switch it on. Now we already have the quantity multiplier integration steps. Okay. So let's burn all the particles in the first frame. We're supposed to do it here as well. I don't think if I said it. And instead of position, let's add a position object and select our brain. The speed can be a random 3D again with this speed don't really matter because we're going to put a wind there. I think, and let's change this shape to some to sphere eight sides, and let's make it uh, very smaller, something like one, one and a half. Yeah, it's fine like this. And just like in the other one, let's add a lock bond here to keep the particles locked on this brain surface. So let's check the lock to surface, restrict to surface, make this force zero and this force zero as well. I'll press Ctrl X and run the timeline. Okay, it's going like this. Now let's add a spawn here to generate a trail by travel distance. And we'll have to decrease this, but we can keep it this like this for a while. And let's add a uh, display here connect this spawn mm. and I will need to inherit none of its speed zero and zero divergence so I think it can get uh, faster and let's show it as geometry cool now check it out we have those kind of veins like this, but it's kind of going in a straight direction. Let's add a wind here so we can make it go uh, randomly with some turbulence. So maybe one of turbulence, but let's keep with no strength and let's add the turbulence the force here on top of the lock bond and let's add the wind here see now we already have a much better look but we have too much veins so let's decrease this value here 50 maybe yeah i think 50 is fine and let's create some branches for these veins. So, in fact, I think it's going too, too, it's getting too long, but let's keep it like this for a while. So to create some branches for these veins, let's add another spawn here on top of the lock bond. And now save your scene because you can have some problems. 
just make sure you have a cache here. And let's change it by travel distance. Uh, maybe a step size of 50, not sure. And it can inherit 100% with a divergence of 20. And let's see what happens now. We will have some problems, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, see, some particles are going crazy. Uh, it just gets like a very fast speed and it kind of un unlock from the surface and it gets really heavy because it will create a lot of particles in this this travel distance so to avoid this stuff to happen you just have to create a speed test let's put the speed test uh, below the lock bond bring the wire to this side and create a new event with a delete operator. Let's connect it here. Now let's change this speed to something like 50 maybe. And now if the particle speed is higher than 50, it will be deleted. It will be sent to this event and it will be deleted. Now let's scroll the timeline. See now, now our veins are getting much smaller. So maybe we can increase this to 100. fine like this now let's just have a look in the options let's uh, uh, check the particle count option to see how many particles do we have here so we have 7,000 more than 7,000 particles here we can increase this number by deleting the particles that are inside the brain so let's just have a look inside of the brain and let's change this realistic to shaded. See, we have a lot of particles here. And it's kind of useless to have those particles here. So how can we delete this? We have that brain base. Let's hide this brain here. And we have this brain base here. I will select it and press Alt X to see it in X-ray mode so we can see it's inside. And we can add a uh, create a data operator to delete all the particles that are inside of the of this brain base here. So I'll create a data operator here on the second event. Let's call this event uh, thick veins, and let's call this data operator delete inside operator. Just make sure you check the auto update. And now let's use a geometry to do it. So with the geometry, we have this option uh, inside objects. And now we just have to say which object using a select object. And let's select our brain base here and connect it here. And now it generates an output uh, Boolean value. And this boolean value just say yes, like just say that it's true if the particles are inside and false if the particles are outside. And now we can use an amount change with the delete options, which is a boolean value as well. And let's change it here to true to delete. So if the particles are inside the object, this super operator will say true to the to this spawn and it will delete the particles that are inside. So you can see that it's already working and it's deleting only the particles from the brain and the veins event, the second one here, thick veins. And then the other particles can stop, tra can, can keep traveling and it goes, when, when it goes out of this brain base, it, it keeps generating some particles, vein particles. Okay, that's very important because we want to increase those, the, the number of those particles here a lot. Because we're going to create some shape of these veins using a scale. So just let's add a scale here. It can be below the lock bond. And let's change these options to relative first. The related first, we can animate those parameters here. So here in the beginning, I'll press N to make the timeline. 
red and it's anima animatable. And let's decrease this scale factor to something like 15. And in something like 30 frames, maybe let's increase it to 100 again. And see, now we have this, the tip of the veins, just very smaller. And here on the 100 frame, which is the last one, I want it to be 15 again. But on the 30 frames earlier, I want it to be 100 as well. So now it keeps from 15 to 100. And then it stays 100 for a while and then it goes back to 15. And as you can see, we have those. Let's unhide our brain again. Now check it out. We have those cool, cool shape like this. So I'll press N again to stop it from being animatable. And I will increase a lot this step size here. Something like zero, one maybe. You just have to take care, you, you know your computer, you can make it even lower if you want it or just something like a bit higher if you think your computer can't make it. So I think it's great like this, but I think we have too much veins. So let's decrease this value here to something like 34, I like this number. Let's update it again. So, yeah, I think it's really cool like this. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. So now let's create a frost mesh for this. Just bring back the timeline to the first frame. Otherwise, it can keep really slow when you create the frost. Not sure why. Uh, so, think box, frost. Let's create another frost here. Let's call this frost thick veins. And let's add our brain, mm, our particle flow source here. Just I don't need those lines anymore, so I'll select it all and delete it. Select the thick veins, frost, and keep it when you spheres. And this time, let's use the radius channel because our particles are changing its size. So we have to switch it on now and have a look. We have to increase the resolution of the... Let's here on the thick veins event, let's hide it. And let's increase this viewport here to something like five maybe. Yeah, it's okay like this. You can have some bad resolution here in the tips, but it doesn't really matter because we're not looking from so close. And I think it's okay. So you can just scroll your timeline and see where you think the, the veins are looking better. Uh, now check it out, we have those missing particles here when, to, when, the, when the spawn creates another particle, we have this gap. To fix this, you can increase the, the integration steps. So let's increase it to half maybe. Now with the view part with five, it can get really slow. So we just have to be patient so you can bring it down for a while. Yeah, it looks much better now. Can't really see those gaps. So it's okay. I like it this way. So let's just convert this frost to editable poly and 
switch off this particle flow source. Now, these <laughs> veins have like a huge amount of particles, of, of polygons. It's cool to create the details, but now we don't really need it, so let's just add a Pro Optimizer here and press Calculate. It can take some time now. And let's decrease it a lot to like 10% maybe. Yeah, 10% is fine. Maybe even lower, 80. Okay, it's okay. And let's convert it to Editable Poly again. Great. Now let's create some thin veins. So let's call this one thick veins base. And let's hold shift and copy this event here. Uh, yeah, it can be a copy, not an instance. Mm. Let's do just like the same one. So let's use the same particle flow source, connect it here, and let's connect our speed test there on the delete event. And let's connect our spawn. Let's bring it down a bit. Let's connect our spawn here. So in fact, let's bring this one to this side. Connect our spawn here. Switch it on for a while. And let's call this thin veins. Okay, let's call it just veins, because I was using on the other event as well. Just make sure you bring your timeline to the beginning and switch on your particle flow source. Cool. Now we can use the same setup, but with smaller particles, like here on the shape, let's bring it down to 0 0.5. We can use a higher amount of particles. And just make make sure you create a new seed for this position so it doesn't don't burn all in the same the same place. And let's update it. So now we have a lot of smaller veins. Not really liking this this stuff like this. I think it's going too fast, so let's try decreasing this speed here to 80 maybe. See if it's something something changes. Mm, yeah, much better. Uh, but we still need more particles. So we can increase it to 100, maybe. Let's decrease this a little bit more. And yeah, much better. Now you can create another frost. Let's call it thin veins. See what I said? When you create a frost and your timeline is in the end, it kind of update all your particle flow and stuff. So just bring it back to the beginning and add the particle flow source here. Mm, switch on the 
keep it off union of spheres and switch on the radius channel and increase this view part here you don't really have to increase it a lot because it will create like can slow down your system a lot so let's keep it in four and let's hide this event here and update it so i just stopped it on the 70 frame because it was it was getting too slow so i think it's fine like this so let's select our thin veins it's the frost 001 let's convert it to cheatable poly and let's add a optimizer here uh, now you can that it's converted to digital poly you can you can switch off the particle flow source something that i forgot is that this particle count keep the system slower so switch it off mm, it's okay let's call it thin veins mm, press calculate here I have to wait a little bit. And now let's decrease this a lot to something like 8. Hmm. Let me see it. Maybe even less, like 5. Yeah, 5 is okay. So just convert it to digital poly again. And I forgot something. Uh, check it out. The end of my veins will be really thick like this. Because I forgot that I have this animatable, this parameter here animated. So to, if you want to decrease this, you just, you can click here, uh, right click here and show this in track view. So you can, let's just bring it to 40 here and this one to 70. Cool. And now it will work fine, but I'm not doing it again. So that's it. Here's our brain model and you can create this pattern on every kind of surface that you can imagine. And I think it's really hard to model a brain like manually. And here it's much better and procedurally. So thanks for watching. Bye.